Ever since I was a kid, my favorite movie was The Music Man, starring Shirley Jones. And I think the reason for that was it was just so imaginary that it was something that I could relate to because it was just a very bizarre world that I grew up in. I always grew up with this sense that I came from struggle and I came from hardship. My mother was gay. She was born very poor in Puerto Rico. So there was a hard edge to the love in the home. Her partner, who was together with her from my earliest memories, was different. She was very much, in, in my mind, the, the middle-class, middle-American mother. Everything that was sweet and caring. She did not live in the same home with us. We only spent weekends together. But they were together for the whole time, and in a lot of ways, I think their decision to not move in together until I was a teenager. It wasn't overwhelming me. I was in a very different situation from my older siblings. They had, did have a memory with my dad and they had a relationship with my dad and they did not have as close of a relationship with my mother's partner as I did. My mom was a psychiatrist and she was involved a lot in providing assistance to mentally troubled people who were gay or lesbian or transgender. And I worked in her clinic when I was a kid. And so you become exposed in different ways to what the culture was, not just the lesbians, but the men. The first time I actually had sex was I was 13 and we were drunk, and it was with two older teenage boys. I, it was all very, very vague, but I remember that it had happened, and at that point, I wanted to go out and do more of it because it was kind of a thrill. I stumbled into it. I, I never really had a chance to figure out what I wanted, or it just, you know, it, ha it happened too quickly. I grew up around the things that were sexually unusual and I didn't have boundaries. So I can say things that sound vulgar to other people, but it just sounds like Tuesday to me. My mother died when I was 19. My mother's partner had to move out of the house and I think she was in a huge state of grief and her children really needed her at that point, her biological children and she really couldn't be there for me. So I remember we had one conversation and she said to me, you know, your, your father is your father, You're, you know, he will be the one to provide for you. But the relationship between me and my dad didn't come together. So I ran away. I mean, I was 19, so I can't say I ran away as if I was a homeless teenager, but I was in fact a homeless teenager. <laughs> On the one hand, if they had had a civil union or a domestic partnership or a marriage or something, my mother's partner would have been able to stay in her home. She probably would have inherited more than she got. But I think if they had gotten married the way the gay marriage is structured now, they would have effectively erased all ties to my dad. That would have been lost permanently. And unfortunately, that's why I ended up with the political position that I hold because what gay people want from marriage now, it's not the way it was at the beginning of the gay marriage movement when it was just about visiting each other in the hospital or getting tax breaks or whatever civil unions could have given to them. Now they want marriage to be a way to say, I am the mother to my lesbian partner's children. And then there's a child who has basically been forced into an emotional relationship with someone who can't be that for them. And that causes so much harm. It was very much exactly the way it would have been if my mother had gone to a sperm bank. But I still wanted to see my dad, even though he was never there. The idea is so powerful in your head that there's a father and a mother out there. I mean, how can you erase that?
So I moved to New York, and lo and behold, my credit was not very good, so nobody wanted to rent an apartment to me. And so I figured the one thing that I know how to do is how to find gay men. So I went out and found them. And there was a place in the Bronx that had an extra spare room. And so I moved in with this gay man, and I found ways to pay the rent. But then I found out that I had cancer at the age of 27. So there was, I had a tumor, and my tumor markers were 95 times the normal level. And so I had to be rushed in to have the tumor removed. And at that moment, I don't know why, but I wanted to see my dad. I really wanted to see my dad. So he flew down to New York. I just remember him telling me, I'm your father. You're my son. And I moved in with my dad, and I acted like a nine-year-old because I just wanted to live that, what I had. I had made it past cancer, and I didn't know whether the cancer was gonna come back or what was gonna happen, but I just decided that I wanted this. I wanted to have a, a life with a father, and so I just did it, and we're close now. I had never been with a woman, and um, but I'd always found women attractive. It's just I'd never acted on that because I never felt like I could. It was always kind of scary to me. And then I fell in love with a woman. So I found myself at the age of 29 saying, I have to get married. You know, it was something I'd never felt before. So we got married, and then we had two kids. And, um, you know, that's all I have right now. I mean, I myself am bisexual. That is what I am. I find both men and women attractive, regardless of the fact that I did marry a woman, and I am in a re faithful relationship with her. It could have ended differently. It could have ended up that I got into a lifelong relationship with a man. But gay marriage is wrong. Not for, in my mind, because of religious reasons, but because you can't give kids the support that they need at the same time that you're forcing them to not have a father and then to have this extra person in their life. It just doesn't work. The gay community has been so put on lockdown by the gay marriage debate because they can monitor what you say all the time. Twitter, Facebook, email. They call your job, they call your family. They turned siblings of mine against each other. Some of them I will never speak to again in all likelihood. I mean, that was one of the most painful things. I guess I just want justice. I want our country to find a sense of putting others before themselves whatever small steps we can take. I know it's almost impossible. I hope that there's some way.